One of the fundamental philosophical questions that really remains unanswered or at least unresolved is the question of who am I? And while philosophers, they provide all kinds of insights into perhaps how we can answer that question, it really isn't up to them to answer it for us. Each of us has to answer that question for ourselves. Are you a child, a teenager, or an adult? And it's really understanding who we are as a person. It's really important for us to know, for us to effectively live. Because when we're not able to clearly identify or clearly answer that question, it prevents us really from making decisions, from making choices in our life. We become frozen and unable to move. Either that or we flip and we flop and we wander about aimlessly. Either way, we are dissatisfied, we're unhappy, and we're unfulfilled. Questioning our identity, becoming confused about who we were created to be and why we are created is so prevalent today in our society. And it's causing a lot of disruption in our schools, our communities, and in our relationships to one another. I don't think there's a day that goes by that we don't hear about some form of identity crisis affecting or causing some kind of uproar in one of our communities. So how would you answer the question, who am I? What form? would your answer take? Would you describe yourself by what you do? Or perhaps where you came from, your family or country of origin? Does your perspective on life, does that influence the way you would answer that question? Do you define yourself? Or do you rely on others to define you? This really isn't a simple question for any of us. And yet it is really critical for each and every one of us to be able to answer that basic question. Who am I? And while philosophers, they explore that fundamental questions about human existence, it is faith that provides us the answer to that question. When we think about who am I, we can look to our faith and we learn that we are created by God. We are made in his image and likeness and we are created for a purpose. The catechism. In the very first paragraph states that God, infinitely perfect and blessed in himself, in a plan of sheer goodness, freely created man to make him share in his own blessed life. And for this reason, and at every time and in every place, God draws closer to man. And he calls man to seek him, to know him, and to love him with all his strength. We are unique in creation. No other creature is endowed with the divine image. And not only are we created in his image, but God goes even further. 
God, in order to draw closer to man, humbly accepted our human nature. And he became bonded to us in our own creation through the incarnation of his son, Jesus. Jesus took on our human nature. He then adopts us as his sons and his daughters through the sacramental grace he bestows on us in the sacrament of baptism. We now share in a most intimate way a relationship with our creator bestowed on us by Jesus. God created us as we are, perfect in his image, to learn to love as he loved and to obtain eternal life when we pass from this life. When we accept the truth, we can more easily answer that fundamental question of who am I? And we can live our lives in accordance with that truth, knowing, loving, and serving our God in this world so that we can share eternal life with him in the next. When I step back and I think about all of the incidents of identity crisis making the news headlines today, it seems pretty obvious to me that much of society has rejected the truth about who created us and why. Gender confusion is incompatible with our knowing that God created us as he chose, not as we choose. Abortion would not be an option if we accepted the truth about in whose image the child in the mother's womb is created. Child and sex trafficking be gone. This is what set the early Christians apart from the rest of the society in which they lived. A society steeped with the same social problems that we today face. The early Christians, they understood their identity and they lived their lives in accord with that identity. And they now live eternally in heaven. We too must embrace our identity and live our lives as Christ has taught us to live. We must reject the evil behavior that our society accepts and confidently act in conformance with the gospel. And when we pass from this life, we will ascend to our Father, rightly being known as his son or daughter, and fulfilling our destiny as God desires.